Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Dasneem Abrahams. I'm the founder of the Private Practice Growth Club. And on this channel, we share tips, tools and tutorials for health professionals starting and growing private practices in South Africa. Now, as a practice owner who also has, you know, a life, <laughs> you probably have a million and one tabs open in your brain and even an even longer list of things you need to do, things you need to remember, things you need to keep track of, places you need to go, people you need to connect with and, and, and. We are all like jugglers in this circle called life. And from time to time, we drop a ball or two, or maybe even all at the same time, but we pick ourselves up and we start juggling again. But this can cause an immense amount of stress and even burnout. To avoid this, we either need to put down a few balls or find a way to become more proficient in managing the ones we do have in the air. Now, in the Private Practice Growth Academy, there is a whole module called Optimized Operations dedicated to the specific topic, specific to the efficient and effective running of a practice. So if you would like to know more about the Academy, do go and check out the link in the description box below. In the meantime, on this channel, under the Productivity Playlist, I will be sharing a series of videos on different aspects of productivity, from systems to tools, from managing your own time to managing a team. So if this is something you are interested in, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified whenever I post new videos. Now, there are hundreds of productivity methods out there and everyone who uses any one of them will swear by it, claiming it is the best method out there. But this is simply not true. The best, best method is the one that works for you. And yes, sometimes that might mean you commit sacrilege and cross-pollinate the methods of multiple systems or God forbid you use your own variation of a system. Some of the examples of popular productivity systems at the moment are the Get Things Done method, Monday Hour One, Eat the Frog, the Pomodoro method, the Smart Goals method, the Plan Tomorrow Today method, the Not To Do List method, the Eisenhower matrix, and the list goes on and on and on. And I will be doing an overview of each of these methods on this channel just for you so that you can go and check it out in more detail and see if it's something that might resonate with you. Then there are also many digital tools that you can use to facilitate or to help you implement the framework into your life. These are digital tools. The digital tools include things like apps, browser extensions, and sometimes there's even analog tools, which is like your good old fashioned paper based diary or planner, which can help you to implement the, the, the various frameworks. And some of the examples of the digital tools can be any.do, Todoist, Asana, there's Trello, there's ClickUp. And then there's, of course, the whole free Google productivity suite of tools that is available to you for free. And just as there are hundreds of methods and frameworks out there to help you be more productive, there are probably equally as many tools to go with it too. So this is the part where I caution the perfectionists and the procrastinators out there. Yes, I'm also talking to myself <laughs> that what you don't want to do is caught up get caught up in this groundhog day loop of endlessly starting and restarting a new system every time in your bid to find the one that suits suits you perfectly or similarly to go get into the cycle of trying out new apps and a different app and setting it up and trying to get it perfectly and then abandon it because it's just not working for you. So how do you find the right system? Well, like most things in life, you need to take a step back and first understand yourself and what you need in an effective system before you go looking for one. The reason there are so many different productivity methods is that not everyone operates the same. It's important that you need to understand the one that is right for your needs and your natural tendencies, your natural behaviors. According to any do, the app, one of the productivity apps I mentioned earlier, it's a task management app. And according to them, there are three aspects you need to take into consideration when choosing a productivity framework. Firstly is your personality. You want to consider 
when looking for a productivity improvement method, you need to consider what your natural personality traits are. So for example, are you naturally a very organized person? So is it natural for you to use a system that is very structured and helps helps your brain function in a very organized way because that's how you naturally operate? Or are you a procrastinator where you need kind of deadlines and reminders to help you get things done? Are you messy? Are you forgetful? Are you a morning person? There's no point using a method that, that requires a highly structured, ridiculous hours of the morning kind of routine if you don't operate best at this time. Do you have problems focusing? Do you need help prioritizing? What are your strengths and how can you choose a system that actually fits within your unique strengths? Each productivity brings its own rules, limitations and habits. Uh, productivity systems that have many rules is not going to suit somebody who needs needs to operate in a more flexible, um, creative space because they can't, maybe they feel stifled when there's too many rules and limitations. So you need to take that into account. And while it is important to step out of your comfort zone, you're not going to find a system that's going to work exactly like your brain. You do actually want to push yourself to step out of your comfort zone. That's how we grow. That's how we learn. That's how we improve. But you don't want to push yourself so far out of your comfort zone when you are trying to start or create a new productivity habit that it actually creates an obstacle in you forming that habit in the first place. And if you want to know about forming great forming habits and effective ways to form great habits, I do re highly recommend the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. I talk about it all the time. It's helped me immensely. And that's something that he mentions as well. You want to remove any barriers to implementation or starting of a new habit. The third thing that you need to take into account is environment. Um, not the third thing, the second thing you need to take into account is environment. You want to consider what is the type of environment that you are working in or that you need to get stuff done in. So for example, some might be, some of you might work in a job with a very quiet surrounding where you work mostly by yourself, while other people work in places where there's lots of activity and lots of dependencies where your time is not necessarily your own, where your time is reliant on other people getting things done, or similarly, other people are reliant on you getting things done. So you can't just decide when and where you're going to do certain things, right? So you need to consider your environment. The type of environment you're in can make or break your productivity. So it's very important that you use a method that can be easily used in the environment that you are trying to implement the productivity method in. And then the third one is that you want to consider the function and what you are using the method for. So people that work in a single project or a single role within their work environment need a very different method to those that are doing multiple different things throughout the day. Or similarly, what if you are using it for yourself in your personal capacity, it's going to be very different to if you are looking for a system that you're going to help your whole team to be more productive. Or maybe you need to help, use something that can help you get your whole family organized. We are a family of six with multiple schedules and multiple things happening at the same time. So um, the way I, the way I use a productivity system or the productivity system that I choose needs to fit in with that structure very differently to someone who is somebody who lives on their own, who has control of their own time, who doesn't have to worry about other people's schedules. Are you using this productivity system for you personally only for your managing only your personal life or are you using it looking for something to manage your work life and your practice or are you using it for a combination of both? Once you know how to distinguish how you'll be using the method, what you'll be using it for, what environment and how your brain operates, you'll have a much easier time choosing the best one. There are many productivity methods to choose from that it can sometimes get very confusing. But remember, a good productivity method is not just about getting more shit done. It also needs to help you get more of the right shit done so you can achieve those goals. You also need to remember that productivity frameworks are not magical unicorns that are going to miraculously make your load lighter as soon as you start implementing it. They are simply there to help you structure your processes and help you make better decisions when it comes to your time 
and where and how you spend it. So at the end of the day, even if there is a productivity method that you find that you really resonate with, you are still going to have to put in the work to actually set it up and implement it and actually uh, implement it in your life and create a lifestyle from it. And only then will you start reaping the rewards. And in the same vein, we could say the same thing about tools. A lot of people think, oh, I'm going to use that tool because that's going to change my life. But if you don't use the tool effectively or you don't use it in conjunction with a specific framework or system, then it's not going to really do the job because the tool isn't the thing that's going to make you productive. It's you using the tool in the in the intended way that is going to make you pr more productive. And like I said again, it doesn't mean that you're going to see, you're going to choose a productivity system that really resonates with you, that you have to stick to the rule to the T. If, you know, like if you choose the get things done method and it says you need to do this step one to five or whatever, if that doesn't work for you or you don't, you can choose what actually does work for you and you can combine it with something else like the Monday hour one or the weekly review or the eat the frog. And you can combine different elements and make it unique to you. These are some of the things we deal with in our weekly coaching calls where we look at the um, product at different productivity systems and people can ask questions about how they can apply it in their practices or in their personal lives or any of those things. So if you are also keen to join our masterclass and live weekly coaching calls, which happens every Wednesday evening, do go and check out the link for that. There is a membership available on a month to month basis where you can cancel at any time. And all the recordings and replays from previous um, live calls and master classes are available for you when you join. So do go and check that out. If the academy is not for you, that is another option for you to learn from the private practice growth, growth, growth community. So in my next video, I'm going to be in my next video in this productivity series. I'm going to start off with how I use or how you can use Google Calendar with Google Tasks to re to manage your task list or your to-do list, list as an individual or a solopreneur. So do look out for that video. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications of new videos.